This is Judith Miller from the Department of French Literature, Thought, and Culture. I'm very pleased to be speaking to you about an essay I've been teaching and mulling over since the late 1970s. Penned by Antonin Artaud in 1933, the theater and the plague metaphorizes through images of the bubonic plague the revolution Artaud hoped to see in theater work. For those of you unfamiliar with Artaud, he was born in 1896 and held a singular place among French experimental artists and thinkers of the first half of the 20th century. Since then, his writings have been central to major avant-garde theater practice all across the globe. So here goes with my talk, which I have entitled Artaud, The Theater, and The Plague. Many great creative minds of France, and not only of France, have grappled with the thought of Antonin Artaud, as well as with what the man himself has meant to post-World War II intellectual and artistic life. Those working through notions of language, the body, and the potential of art to shake up the world have studied the writings of this visionary, not to say this madman. Indeed, late in Artaud's career, the editor Jean Paulin and writers Robert Desnos and Jean-Paul Sartre, with other admirers, managed to free Artaud from the asylum where he had been consigned during the occupation. They sponsored a lecture at Radio France, but Artaud's blasphemous howling created a scandal that led to the program's cancellation. Jacques Derrida, in a celebrated essay on representation, highlighted Artaud's fertile struggle with impossibility. Derrida saw how keenly Artaud felt that language failed him. For Artaud, words could not hold on to the theatrical object he was so desperate to define. In better times, when Artaud had been less troubled by the mental and physical demons that followed him from his home in Marseille to Paris, a city then recuperating from the horrors of World War I, this beautiful young man had starred in silent films. Comparing stills of him then with photos of the patient who had undergone multiple shock therapies by the 1940s is disquieting, to say the least. Perhaps more memorable in his early period is Artaud's role as a compassionate monk in Karl Dreyer's film version of The Martyrdom of Joan of Arc. In the 1920s, Artaud also mounted a production company with playwright Roger Vitrac and named his theater after the century's first theatrical iconoclast, Alfred Jarry, whose celebrated character, King Ubu, bears some resemblance to the current president of the United States. At the Théâtre Alfred Jarry, Artaud staged surrealist farces and Elizabethan melodramas. Less well known, but nevertheless central, I think, for the history of French theater, Artaud roomed for a time with the director Roger Blain, one of the great stage sculptors of what has come to be called the theater of the absurd. Blain's ability to squeeze out and reshape through straight stagecraft all the terrifying irony in Jean Genet's plays, that is, to give instability a form, resonated unquestionably with Artaud's writing on theater. This paradoxical destabilizing of what nevertheless remained theatrical, precisely because there was a formal conceit, echoed throughout many works of the 1960s. Here's one example, how the influential British director, Peter Brook, imagined his staging of Peter Weiss's Marat Saad, a play in which the Marquis de Saad character makes perverse theater with the inmates of a mental asylum in Charenton during the French Revolution. The peripatetic living theater also seeded the international experimental theater world of the 1960s and 70s with Artaud's provocative suggestions. The living theater's aesthetic Bible, by then translated into English, was, and you may already have guessed it, Artaud's Le Théâtre et son Double, in English called The Theater and Its Double. A great deal has been said about the title of this grouping of individual essays, first published by Gallimard in 1938 and reissued in 1948, the year Artaud passed away, reissued to much greater acclaim and interest. The title, The Theatre and Its Double, 
makes apparent which of the two terms founds the other. But what exactly is the double of theater? Artaud tells us, over and over again, life. But life as ecstasy, life as transformation, life as stirring, carnage, torture. A psychic voyage that puts us face to face with our own worst impulses and with mortality. And this life, coming back to us in theatrical form, is meant to affect the kind of emotional and psychological revolution that will reconcile us to ourselves, to our humanity, and to our place in the cosmos. Nowhere is this what I might call a radical purgation clearer than in Artaud's second essay in the theater and its double, titled The Theater and the Plague. He frames this particular equation obliquely collapsing the and, and thus advancing the notion of theater as plague, by the tale of the terrible plague that hit Marseille in 1720 and killed 100,000 people, a plague from which the nearby Mediterranean island of Sardinia miraculously escaped. It seems that the island's viceroy had had a dream, a kind of telepathic communication with the virus, telling him not to let the plague-laden ship headed for Marseille, land in his port. He sent the ship, Le Grand Saint-Antoine, away. Unfortunately, Marseille was not destined to be so lucky. Already sequestered because of one plague, Marseille's population thus suffered another plague, twice as ferocious. In his essay, Artaud describes plague-ridden bodies in revolting images, eyesight, an atrocious fatigue, as if aspirated by some magnetic center overwhelms the sick person, their molecules splitting in half, hurtling towards total destruction. Soon the fluids, blasted as though a field struck by lightning as though a volcano launched by subterranean storms, attempt to escape from the body. The gallbladder, meant to filter out waste and impurities, bursts, grossly ballooning with a sticky black liquid. The brain disintegrates into a kind of charcoal dust, and I could go on, including paraphrasing his lengthy and horrendous vignettes of plunderers searching through piles of corpses for money and gold, and his tales of formerly virtuous sons killing their fathers and sodomizing the dying. Humans that survived, Artaud tells us, were turned inside out, shaken to the very core of their being, but also strengthened by the apocalyptic experience. Artaud claims that the real interest of the plague, its profound value, is in fact its lessons about the psyche. For the plague hits especially those parts of the body where the will and consciousness live. And it is the gratuitous insanity that takes place during a plague that inspires him. This consuming madness is, says Artaud, what theater true theater, essential theater, not mere entertainment, must be eyesight. More important than any other thing, theatrical performance, like the plague, must be delirious and contagious. It shakes up our senses, frees the repressed unconscious, pushes us to a virtual revolt whose greatest value lies in its remaining virtual. The theater elicits from those gathered together a courageous, and heroic attitude. In other essays in this collection, Artaud pr produces a less abstract menu of technical and thematic elements to help bring forth the emotional, even metaphysical earthquake he wants theater to be. In the theater and the plague, he calls for themes of absolute danger and revolt, themes that take us to the source of unsolvable moral conflicts, or, as he puts it, the exteriorization of a latent fount of cruelty in which we find all the possible perversions of a person's or a people's spirit. In later essays outlining what the theater of cruelty should be, he calls for something immersive, where the distance between actors and audience would be abolished. He imagines acting bodies as conduits for trance states and participatory emotional exchange. He wants spectators to be penetrated and attacked by incantatory music, brilliant lighting, and vocalizing that approaches the bestial. All senses must be alerted, 
No distance, no intellectual barrier should prevent the reception of the theater's emotional valence. Like the plague, theater should be unmediated in order to do its work of restructuring our society and our minds. For also, like the plague, and I cite again, theater exists to puncture and drain collectively a giant abscess, one as much moral as social. At this very challenging moment in our collective existence, I am moved to find Artaud's essay on theater and the plague so relevant. We are indeed being shaken to our cores, turned inside out, and forced daily to confront our own mortality. No magical intervention has spared us or anyone else on the planet from the docking of the ship bearing the virus. I have come around to hoping as Artaud intimates early on in his dense and electric essay, that the plague usually accompanies radical change in government. And I am also holding on to his notion that once this, our own plague, is over, we too will be cleansed, transformed forever because of the collective trial and the assault on our nerves, our hearts, and our minds. His concluding thoughts in the theater and the plague sum up some of what I have been observing these last few days. Theater's action, like that of the plague, is curative because it forces human beings to see themselves as they are. It makes masks fall, uncovers lies, explodes asphyxiating inertia, and reveals to collectivities their deep power, their hidden force, inviting them to face the future with strength and an attitude they would never have had if not tested. <laughs>